Chapter 16 revisits the notion of solubility that we talked about earlier in the year. We define things as being soluble or insoluble. We use the rule of likes dissolve likes to see that polar solutes would dissolve in polar solvents and nonpolar solutes in nonpolar solvents. In reality, however, everything is soluble. The question is to what extent? There are various degrees of solubility. When we describe as something soluble, that means a great deal of that solute will dissolve in the given solvent. There are things that are slightly soluble, however, where only a small amount of solute will dissolve in a solvent. And we still use the terms insoluble, saying that no solute will dissolve. But when we use the word insoluble, what we really mean to say is that there's such a small amount of solute dissolved that it really can't be measured. Let's talk about dissolving an ionic compound. Let's show the equation of solid calcium sulfate dissolving in water. When calcium sulfate dissolves, it dissociates into the calcium ion and the sulfate ion. This is the dissolution process, or the dissolving process. We could reverse this reaction. We could take the calcium ions and the sulfate ions and make calcium sulfate. Now this may look familiar to you. This is a net ionic equation for a precipitation reaction. We've already defined that when we have aqueous ions forming a solid, we call that a precipitate. If we have reversible reactions, we could write this two equations with a double arrow and just write it as one equation. And when we see reversible reactions, we should also be thinking about equilibrium. Let's talk about the calcium sulfate equilibrium. When we say equilibrium, we mean that there's a balance between the dissolving and the precipitation process. Equilibrium occurs when you have both the reactants and the products present at the same time. In other words, you have undissolved solute and aqueous ions at the same time. Now if you remember the dissolving process, when we said that we had undissolved solute and we had aqueous ions at the same time, we described that solution as being saturated. So equilibrium occurs when you're at the saturation point. In other words, equilibrium occurs when you're at the maximum concentration that is possible. Let's look at the equilibrium expression. Here's our reaction again. If I were to write the equilibrium expression, I would say that the equilibrium constant would equal the concentration of the calcium ions times the concentration of sulfate ions. We would not include the calcium sulfate because it's a solid, and solids, just like liquids, don't appear in our equilibrium expressions. Now we've seen Ka's for acids and Kb's for bases and Kw's for waters. For the dissolving process, we call this Ksp. Sp is solubility product. It is the product of the dissolved ions. So let's do a little math. For this equilibrium that we've already discussed, at 25 degrees Celsius, the maximum concentration of calcium sulfate is 0 0.0078 molar. With that information, we should be able to find the Ksp. As you look at the equilibrium, CaSO4 breaking down to get Ca2 plus and SO4 2 minus. We are told the maximum concentration of the calcium sulfate is 0 0.0078 molar. The phrase maximum concentration tells you that the solution is saturated. And again, saturated means that we're at equilibrium. If I know the concentration of the calcium sulfate is 0 0.0078 molar, well now I have to do a little stoichiometry. If I have 0 0.0078 molar calcium sulfate, what's my concentration of the calcium? And what's my concentration of the sulfate? Because calcium sulfate is a solid, it doesn't actually appear in my equilibrium expression. Well, fortunately, this is just a nice one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. If my calcium sulfate is 0 0.0078 molar, I know my calcium is also going to be 0 0.0078 molar. And my sulfate is also going to be 0 0.0078 molar. I can plug these numbers into this equilibrium expression and say Ksp is going to equal the concentration of the calcium ion, which is 0 0.0078, times the concentration of sulfate, which is 0 0.0078, or 0 0.0078 squared, 
which equals 6.1 times 10 to the negative 5. Now this is an equilibrium constant, so like all of our equilibrium constants, we get to ignore our units. So this is my final answer right here. Now that we found the KSP for one substance, we could take a look at the text and see that there's a whole table of KSP values. This will come in handy as we take a look at future KSP problems.